Hi, today we are here to talk about Uric. Um, and I am joined by Lynn Coles, who is an assistant professor at the University of Texas at Austin. She's a Rhetoric 306 class and she is currently teaching a Rhetoric 309K. So Lynn is a wonderful expert on visual rhetoric and I'm going to hand it over to her. Um, so since you all are working on the DREAM Act, let's kind of think about these four things, context, audience, arrangement, and modes of persuasion um, in a piece, or in a text that was created for the DREAM Act uh, itself. Um, this was an advertisement that was published in a, a Spanish print media source in Nevada um, during election time in 2010. This is going to be online, the PowerPoint presentation, and there's a link right down here that shows you where I found the advertisement itself, which you can look at um, to find, you know, to do more research on your own if you'd like to. Um, so, just to give some cultural context, in Nevada, non-Caucasian students are the majority of student populations there. Um, Harry Reid is the senator to whom this, uh, this letter in, in the advertisement is, is written, and he is a Democratic senator from Nevada who did support the DREAM Act. Um, broader issues within the controversy include immigration law, economics, public education reform, and job development, as you'll see when we get down to the analysis of some of these different organizations here that actually did um, support the piece and get it published in, in print sources in the first place. Um, so let's go to the next one. In order to determine audience for this piece, we would need to do a little bit more research about exactly what magazine or publication it appeared in. We know that it's a Spanish language uh, publication, and we know that it's directly addressed to Senator Harry Reid. However, is that the actual, I guess, audience, particularly for the piece? Since it's published in a large publication, and publicly, therefore, um, it seems like there's something beyond, or there's, there's a group beyond just this one man who the, uh, the piece is supposed to be appealing to. Um, and even though those, most of the text in the, in the piece is written in Spanish, as you see down here, there are two English language organizations, one called America's Choice and one employment, uh, sorry, employee union as well, um, who did sponsor the piece and who both linked to the piece on their websites. So it's available in English language websites as well, and therefore probably the audience of the piece goes beyond just Spanish-speaking people. Um, even though there's a child in the piece, of course, we're, we're, we're dealing with issues here that are legislative and ones regarding public policy that perhaps children aren't necessarily tuned into, and therefore the piece appeals to an older audience as well as perhaps, well, in, probably in, in alternatively to just the children who are affected by the DREAM Act. Um, and again, even though the piece is published in a Spanish-speaking uh, print media source, it doesn't necessarily mean that it only is speaking to an audience that already supports its conclusion. Um, there are, like I said, employee unions and immigration reform organizations that are um, sponsoring this piece in order probably to get people to adopt their opinion on the DREAM Act in relation to their own specific issues related to employment and related to immigration reform as well as public education. Um, so let's move to the next one. The arrangement of the piece is interesting. Um, it creates sort of a, a correspondence here between the sort of technical vocabulary of leg legislation here on the one side, and then the sort of um, childish, not childish, but, but child-oriented school environment on the other. And so um, the one corresponds directly to the other, and if, if this child su succeeds in school, then perhaps the legislation made that happen, and the kind of like, the one-to-one -one correspondence in the advertisement makes that, makes that parallel possible. Um, the simple font in the red background emphasizes Harry Reid's support of the piece. The, the, uh, the bold here um, emphasizes, um, I would say, probably immigrants' support for the Legislation Act. Um, the conventional font type that you see right here looks a lot like that which you would see in a newspaper and therefore kind of um, asserts the legitimacy of the rhetoric that's happening on this side of the page. And the distinction between the chalk and the sort of um, official type on this side of the page um, indicates that this child's potential development, you know, in, in the kind of rudimentary chalk lines here, could eventually develop into something legitimate and official like the type print that we see in newspapers all over the place. Um, let's go one more. Um, in looking at the girl herself, her dress is very simple. It's in denim. It's a widely available fabric used by many, many different people, or worn by many different people, um, and therefore she kind of represents um, not a particular subset of children, but any child at all. Um, the, uh, 
the, the darkness at the bottom of the board kind of like gets lighter and lighter as you get up to the top when you get to this kind of light bulb moment with the, uh, with the graduation cap. And it just sort of highlights the, um, the, the fact that like this potential is what we're going for in the piece rather than just the, uh, the kind of the, the, the everyday you know, fabric of what education is. But we're, we're trying to get to something better here. Um, and then America's Voice, which is the uh, immigration reform institution down here, and Service Employees International Union, they both indicate kind of like an institutional sanction of the DREAM Act, and therefore um, contribute to the overall visual rhetoric of this piece by lending it an institutional legitimacy that you might not get if you just have a single child. This is rather organizational and something much bigger. Um, so in terms of the emotional appeals of the, ta of the text, of course, we see a very happy, happy child here. Um, I think that it, her, her presence here suggests a sort of family loyalty, um, because you do have, of course, um, this, the DREAM Act affects, affects families, whole families. And um, you see her drive for success in, in the graduation cap, and that gives people a sense of uh, you know, potentiality and success in the future. Um, community and togetherness are expressed a lot in um, the language on this side of the page. Because the, uh, the letter actually thanks Senator Harry Reid for contributing to the progress, or sorry, to the progress and security of the entire nation. Um, and so this sense of like wholeness is expressed in the language on the right hand side of the page, um, as is the sense of security, both personal and national. Personal for families individually and national because um, the whole country will benefit from, from the DREAM Act is, is, what, is, is the argument of the piece. Um, logical appeals we'll talk about next. Um, so logical appeals are somewhat basic in this piece. Um, basically the DREAM Act increases the potential for the educational and occupational success of immigrants' children. And therefore, by supporting the DREAM Act, Harry Reid has made the United States a safer and more prosperous place. Um, sorry for the typo. By supporting the DREAM Act, American citizens will support one another financially and socially. And um, the, the social organizations down here kind of indicate this, the social significance of the DREAM Act. And the, up here, the progress and security of the nation kind of indicates the, uh, you know, the financial success of the nation. Ethical appeals in the text. Um, of course, you see the chalkboard itself, which indicates that the girl herself is in school and therefore is related to the DREAM Act. Um, the Spanish language text and the reputations of America's voice and the SEIU established the uh, organizational kind of um, legitimacy of the stakeholders in, in, the, in, in the piece. Um, Senator Reid's name in this context pr um, proves that the act has legislative support, of course, because he did um, get it passed in the Senate in Nevada. And the act's expression of gratitude su suggests that the act is already partly ex um, accepted by the majority. Therefore, by tapping into this kind of support for the act, you become part of that majority as well. Um, so in conclusion, again, the four main things that we're looking for when, when dealing with visual rhetoric are the context of the piece itself, the audience to which it appeals, the arrangement of it, and how the arrangement of that piece kind of contributes to a larger sense of what the argument of the visual rhetoric piece is, and then um, an analysis of the, of the modes of persuasion, which you've already learned about, um, and how those contribute to the, to the argument of the piece as well. Thank you.